long ago, before humans walked the earth, the winter sun plunged underground into the opening they call Jacob's Well. And afterward, as the rising moon sprang from sacred springs, the earth's waters broke, and she gave birth to the first people. An artesian spring revered by American Indians for millennia, Jacob's Well has been flowing out of a natural underground reservoir known as the Trinity Aquifer for perhaps millions of years. It's one of the largest springs in the Trinity Aquifer system, and it's, this, it's primarily the sole source of Cypress Creek, the beautiful cypress-lined creek that runs through the city of Wood Creek and Wimberley, and the beautiful Blue Hole swimming area. Those who were alive in the first half of the 20th century remember a time when its waters gushed like a fountain. And when you dove into the well, it was very difficult to swim down because of the volume of water that was coming up. When I was a kid, probably bubbled up six or eight inches, and mother said it went up a couple of feet when she was a child in 1900 down there. The first known description of the spring is in a book written by the man for whom some believe the spring was named, Jacob de Cordova, one of the first land agents in this part of Texas. The well is perfectly round, looks as if it had been cut out of the solid rock by a skillful artist, and the water is so clear that even at that great depth you can, with the naked eye, discern as small an object as a pin. When de Cordova published his book in 1858, his goal as a land agent, or as he would be called today, real estate developer, was to entice readers to come here to live. Immediately around the spring, there is a beautiful valley which, though small in size, is very rich and is surrounded by elegant building sites. Some of the first to arrive were entrepreneurs who constructed a water-driven mill a few miles downstream on Cypress Creek in what would become the village of Wimberley to saw lumber, grind corn, and gin cotton. Over the years, as homes were built closer to the spring and water wells by the hundreds were drilled into the aquifer, Jacob's Well, which at times gushed like a fountain, has slowed and at times even stopped flowing altogether. The flow of water from that beautiful mag magical spring has declined alarmingly. When Malcolm Harris and Bill Johnson were growing up, the best and only way to see what was going on in the depths of the spring was by using a homemade diving rig. So we built a diving helmet, had a hot water heater and we put a glass in it and put an air hose on the top and one of us would pump air and the other would go in with rocks to go <laughs> down and... Over the years, up until the 1980s, amateur scuba divers have tried to explore the underwater caverns that feed Jacob's well, sometimes with disastrous consequences. Eight have died after either getting lost in the murky darkness or simply running out of air. Today, only specially trained divers are allowed to explore the underground chambers of the spring. The cave extends for almost a mile underwater. To dive all the way to the end of the principal passage is about a five-hour dive. 
Deep in the cave, there is little to see in the way of plants or wildlife, but around the entrance and even in the first chamber, there are signs of life. We see turtles, several species of fish, catfish, sunfish, perch. These typically are animals that have entered the cave and have lost their way and can't get out. They don't live in a cave environment. There are salamanders. Including the Texas blind salamander, which, because there is no sunlight in the cave, has lost all its pigmentation and no longer needs eyes to navigate the year-round 68-degree waters. Where the spring empties into the Cypress Creek, there is a wide variety of wildlife. Reptiles, amphibians, birds, and mammals make their homes along the banks of the surrounding 81 acres of the Jacobs Well Natural Area. There are many features of the Jacobs Well Natural Area besides the well itself that are very much worthwhile, worth visiting. And interestingly, there are some upland areas where the views are absolutely stunning. We have a nice little pond down here up, uh, right below the overlook. In the, in the dead of summer, these things almost always go dry. Despite the hill country's frequent periods of drought, when the rain comes, it often comes as torrential floods. Some of that water gets captured by karst holes, effectively direct channels down to the underlying aquifer. Good for natural springs, but a potential problem if contaminants follow the same route into the drinking water supply. I've been out here for a couple of years, and this is the first time that I've seen the karst features, and I really like that. It's, it's very interesting, and it's a good demonstration of how important this water is to this area and protecting it and being good stewards. Unfortunately, when the naturally porous landscape gets covered by impervious man-made structures, homes, roads, driveways, and parking lots, the runoff rushes downhill into creek beds that can rapidly overflow their banks. Over the years, flash floods and erosion from fast-moving runoff pushed a 42-ton limestone boulder to the brink of plunging into the mouth of the spring. It wasn't the first time Jacob's Well had to be saved from flood-induced disaster. During the drought, I think the flood of 57, with a real hard rain, all the gravel washed into the creek and into Jacob's Well. And we built a, a wall to protect it from future filling in with gravel. The local community paid to have the gravel removed from the mouth of the spring and the wall or weir remains in place to this day, standing guard at Jacob's Well, so that visitors can enjoy staring into its blue-green depths and experience the wide variety of plants and animals that call the Jacob's Well natural area their home. Everyone that comes to this part of Texas wants to see Jacob's Well. And it's a wonderful place, it's beautiful, it's scenic. It deserves to be seen. But there's a, a limit to visitor presence the well can sustain. The immediate threat are the number of homes and water wells that have been built in the surrounding area, putting a strain on the Trinity Aquifer. Here on the Trinity, uh, the aquifer acts very differently, whether you're in Dripping Springs or you're in different parts of the Wimberley Valley. In 2000, Jacob's Well stopped flowing for the first time in recorded history, and several more times, including 2011, the worst one-year drought in history, when Cypress Creek went dry. And it was no longer flowing in, and it was no longer flowing out, and I'd been coming down and sitting by it and talking to it. <laughs> it stopped. Something had to be done. The Wimberley Valley Watershed Association, under the direction of David Baker, had been buying up adjacent tracts of land in an effort to save Jacob's Well. Even when I first moved here, many of the small springs along creek, Creekside would flow year-round, and those, those don't flow anymore. Baker and the Watershed Association managed the seemingly insurmountable task of assembling surrounding acreage from multiple property owners and then seeing that ownership was transferred to Hayes County in 2010 for creation of the Jacobs Well Natural Area. 
We've been blessed in Texas to have so many wonderful things. And as our populations grow, for the first time uh, in our history, a lot of these resources are really uh, strained. This is a water source for the city of Wimberley, and if it's not protected, uh, it will be devastating. The flow of Jacobs Well is still declining, and we need more effort to protect that flow. The whole natural area is a great treasure, not just for Wimberley, but for the Hayes County and for the entire state of Texas and for the nation.